Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 4 of What If Naruto Was The Red X. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 5 of it, comment down below, and let me know. Then go ahead, and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Dump City, California. X was walking down the street in his civilian clothes, a smirk on his face. His civvies consisted of a pair of loose blue jeans with a simple red t-shirt, a pair of black fingerless gloves with metal plates on the backs, a pair of black combat boots, and a black bucket hat to cover his hair and shadow his eyes, leaving only his whiskers which were ever covered by some of his blonde hair. Ninja Lesson 1. Never let anyone notice your unusual features, if you can help it, makes it easier for those hunting you to track you. Naruto thought to himself then turned on his heel and walked down a corner, while a pair of girls looked at him, before blushing and giggling making the thief smirk. I love this universe, I don't have to worry about spite from teens, I can steal whatever I need, so long as no one sees my face, and I can even make some decent friends for a change. Naruto thought to himself as he then found a place he was looking for, a lonely little shop in the city that sold old and rare books, as well as a few more common ones, but if you wanted to find an unusual book in the city, this was the place to look. Takashi was bored out of his mind, everyone in the store was sitting down and reading, not even buying anything just reading not to mention that cloak wearing girl was back again today he was still bored. Even if she did have almost ghostly tendencies to disappear or reappear out of the shadows, most ninja had those tendencies as well anyways, so it wasn't that unusual for him. Hey, Scarecrow. One of his co-workers called out making Kakashi twitch at the nickname, which he got for his normal name of Kakashi. It's time for your break man, I'll take over the counter. The guy, Jeff if Kakashi remembers correctly, says and Kakashi shrugs, before walking into the back and grabbing one of the erotica books for his own personal amusement. Thus the grey-haired Kanohanin missed the blonde walking into the building, to look around for something to read. While not known to most of those who lived in Kanoha, Naruto actually enjoyed reading more than he liked to talk about. His dope self didn't, because the real him had liked to read with his mom, thus gained a slight love for literature as it reminded him of her to read. Walking around Naruto placed a finger on the spines of the books, and noted some he might like to read before pulling one out that he hadn't seen before. Opening it and reading a little he walked over to the seats, which lay to one side of the store and sat down in a chair, not even noticing the blue cloaked girl next to him that had grey skin. Naruto sat reading quietly, then felt someone staring at him and turned, only to find that none other than Raven of the Teen Titans was sitting next to him, what are the fucking odds? He couldn't help, but wondered then frowned towards her. Any reason you're staring? He questioned and the girl looked at him strangely. People don't normally sit near me. She said simply, and Naruto glanced around without moving his head, and saw they were giving her a white birth. Looking back at the girl he could only wonder why, she wasn't hideous, and she certainly didn't look like she'd bite someone's head off for being near her. Maybe they were afraid of her, after all. If you were a normal person and saw someone tossing man made of solid stone with nothing but a wave of the hand, you'd probably be scared stiff too. He wasn't normal however, so that wasn't much of a problem. Halkyubi gave him a similar ability. I'm, used to hanging around odd girls. Naruto said with a shrug, mostly meaning Hinata, but also to Mari, Ino, Tenten, and even Sakura now that he thought of it. They were pretty odd compared to the girls of this world, even Raven. The set girl raised a brow before returning to her book as Naruto did the same, however, the girl would constantly glance at him with a strange expression every now and then. Naruto chose to ignore it and let her try and figure out what he said on her own while reading his book. Time passed at a sedate pace it seemed, Naruto just sitting back and getting into the book, until her heard a familiar voice at least. Hey Jeff, time for your break now. Came the droll voice of Naruto's ex sensei making the blonde switch, before moving his eyes to the man, which then white and seeing said masked man walking out of the back, and to the counter, while the other guy had it into the back. Oh shit, it's that lazy, no good, and pretty much worthless, asked Kakashi Baka, wait, how the hell did he get here? Oh yeah he and the others all followed after me, aw oh, shit. Does that mean Sasuke team and that bitch Sakura are here too? He wondered to himself however, Naruto didn't notice as Raven narrowed her eyes, his stray thoughts bringing more questions to her mind about the suspicious blonde. Standing up slowly, and as casually as he could Naruto walked over to where he found the book in his hands, and put it up. Hey. Kakashi's voice came, and Naruto would have cursed, had he not known it would be too troublesome, and he'd end up caught. Hey yeah. Naruto questioned, making his voice slightly deeper to make sure Kakashi didn't recognize him. Don't I know you? He questioned and Naruto twitched slightly, before clearing his throat. No, I don't think so, I haven't ever been in this particular store before today. Naruto answered while turning around and Kakashi took a thoughtful look before then shrugging his shoulders. Oh I see sorry, but from behind I almost thought you were a former student of mine. Kakashi sat and Raven walked to stand beside of Naruto with a raised brow. When were you a teacher? She questioned while glaring at the book in his hands and Kakashi chuckled nervously. 
Hey, never mind. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Takashi said and Raven rolled her eyes as Naruto then walked out of the building, sighing at the door and Raven placed her book back where she found it. Not buying anything today, Raven. The man questioned with a nice smile and Raven frowned towards him, before walking out of the building and after Naruto. What's eating her? Kakashi wondered before shrugging and getting back to his stupid little book. Raven walked past numerous people on the street quickly, so she wouldn't lose track of the blonde she had seen in the store. Something about him was bugging her, and it wasn't the odd thoughts that had prodded her senses earlier. It was some kind of strange feeling she got when he sat next to her, like, it was kinship, like she understood him, and he her somehow, why was that? Finally spotting him Raven sank into the ground as a shadow, only to appear in front of the blonde who blinked, before scratching the bridge of his nose. Can I help you? He asked casually, and Raven frowned once more, she still felt that weird feeling of kinship, it was starting to creep her out feeling like you could trust a complete stranger, when normally she trusted no one at all. Yes, I was wondering, have we met before? She asked, if she knew him from before then that might explain the feeling, if not she wasn't sure, why she felt she could trust him. Sorry, can't say we have, and no offense, but you'd probably be pretty hard to forget. Naruto said to the girl smoothly and Raven frowned, he was lying, she didn't know how she knew, her senses told her he wasn't lying but. She decided it didn't matter, she lied even to her friends a great deal, calling someone else out on one would make her a hypocrite. Then do you have a name? Raven asked and Naruto raised a brow. Ah, uh, Naruto. He said and the girl blinked. That's an unusual name. She said flatly and Naruto chuckled lightly. It actually means maelstrom, and is Japanese and decent. He explained and the girl made an O with her mouth before closing it. I'm Raven. Raven offered and Naruto rolled his eyes. Everyone knows that. He said with a smirk and Raven nodded her head to the blonde. That was her least favorite part of being a superhero besides the strain on her long time, the damn paparazzi, so, if we're done here I best, be on my way. Naruto said and started to walk off only for Raven, to make a black field in front of him. I never said we were done. She deadpanned and Naruto blinked before turning around to face the girl with his arms crossed. Then would it be too much to ask, that we talk somewhere a little more private? Naruto asked while motioning around seeing as some people had stopped to try, and listen in onto the exchange, making Raven twitch in annoyance. Fine, when? She asked and Naruto looked thoughtful. I'm free Saturday. He offered, he was actually free any day, but most normal people his age worked or went to school on weekdays, so he was trying, not to draw any unwanted attention to himself. Fine. Saturday. Raven said and then discreetly nudged over to what looked like a dark little cafe. Naruto nodded his head slowly, and then Raven suddenly faded into the ground and vanished, making Naruto blink, before shrugging and calmly walked away. He groaned when numerous people began to try and discreetly wonder, what the exchange had been about, today is just not my day man. He thought to himself as he heard at least 5 people wonder, if they were dating, and some wondering, if he was one of the titans out of costume, he really didn't like Mondays anymore. Sasuke Chiha could be called many things, handsome, by his fangirls only oddly enough, ambitious, by his sensei only, hardworking, by the ass kissing council members, and he is strong, possible the strongest ninja of Kanoha, in his own warped mind, and that of his fangirls at least. However, one thing he isn't, among many others. is patient, Sasuke Chiha is not a patient person, just as poor Neji Hyuga was about to find out. What the hell are we sitting around for? Sasuke demanded of Neji as the Hyuga boy sat down, attempting to meditate, just so he wouldn't be tempted to finish off the Chiha line once and for all himself. Because, Kakashi and myself are currently the highest ranking nin on this mission, as such we make the rules, and it would not be a good idea, to alert the city to people with our abilities, nor would it be prudent to make enemies of its protectors. Neji explained for the millionth time today, why did anyone ever say the Ichiha was ever a fucking genius, all he was good for was blowing things up half the time, and rushed headlong into almost any fight without thought of the consequences. Sasuke gritted his teeth and sneered at Neji, they were supposed to be capturing that damn dope. Not sitting the fuck around and meditating all fucking day. Sasuke began to sporadically clench his right hand, itching to draw his shikado and slice into Neji, then go cutting up this fucking city till the dope came out, shaking his head Sasuke frowned, even he wasn't that rash. The dope would run if they came, just like the coward he obviously was. Sasuke then had a thought, in Kanoha. They kept a list of everyone in the village, and checked off in for hideaways, surely a city this advanced would have better records with their law enforcement agents. Narrowing his eyes Sasuke turned his back on Neji and started walking to the door, only for the Hyuga to stand in his way. Where do you think you're going? Neji demanded and Sasuke sneered, how dare this Hyuga trash make demands of him. The last of the Ichiha. I'm going to find the dope. He said through gritted teeth and Neji frowned. As I said earlier, we are waiting, we are not to arouse any suspicion to us as we attempt to gather information. Neji stated and Sasuke sneered before quickly unsheathing Chikado, and pointing it at the other boy. Out of my way, I won't say it again. 
Sasuke said darkly, and Neji narrowed his eyes on the prick, before rolling his eyes and stepping aside. That's what I thought. Sasuke said smugly and sheathed Chikado. Neji inwardly shook his head at the younger boy's arrogance. If it wasn't for the fact he would be beheaded by the council he personally knocked some sense into the brat. As Sasuke left the warehouse Neji shook his head, and walked over to the center of the room to meditate, and focus his chakra. I somewhat hope he gets himself killed out there tonight, at least then we wouldn't have such an arrogant team to deal with, and could focus on finding Naruto-san. Neji thought to himself, while thinking of the Hokage's personal orders to him concerning Sasuke and smirked slightly. If Ichiha shows even the slightest intents of killing Naruto, you are to execute him immediately. Naruto is more valuable to the village than he is, understood Neji. The woman had ordered and Neji's reply had been simple, understood, Hokage-sama. Later. Naruto was bored, he'd gone around town for a while, just to clear his head, and making sure, that no one was following him home. So it wasn't surprising when he didn't get home till it was well past sunset. Shaking his head, the blonde reached up, and pulled his white and green striped bucket hat from his head, and stuck it into his pocket. I can't believe Kakashi Bakut didn't recognize me. Naruto said with a laugh at Kakashi's expense, while approaching his door. As soon as Naruto walked into his apartment however, none other than Gizmo tackled him straight to the ground. Do you have any idea how long we've been looking for you Tempest? Gizmo demanded and Naruto sighed, then pushed the tiny terror off of him, and then stood up to wave at Mammoth. Hey guys, what's up? Naruto questioned and Gizmo growled. Jinx is fucking missing that's what's up dickhead. Gizmo shouted and Naruto blinked then looked to Mammoth. Is it me, or is he cursing even more than normal? He questioned and Mammoth nodded his head. Okay, thanks for the confirmation now, what is this about Jinx going missing? Naruto said to Mammoth then questioned, only to be dragged into his apartment by Gizmo as Mammoth then closed his door, so no one would hear. Okay, a couple days ago the headmaster sent Jinx out on a job in town. Well at first we didn't think much of it, it was a routine job you know. Anyways it's been 3 days, and I'm starting to get worried, Mammoth here was worried 2 days ago, but I figured she was just running late and. Before Gizmo could continue his ramblings his mouth was covered by Naruto's hand, the blonde's eyes narrowed. What was this mission she went on? He questioned monotonously and Mammoth answered. She went to deliver a message to some of our people on the west side. She was also supposed to bring back some of this month's hull but. Mammoth left off and Naruto frowned angrily. Where are these guys? He questioned angrily, and Gizmo pulled his hand off of his mouth. What do you need to know that for? He asked and Naruto glared at him. First things first, I'm going to check these guys out, they might know what happened to Jinx. Naruto said flatly, and Gizmo made an O with his mouth. On the west side in an abandoned hotel, I think the guy she went to see, was in room 312 or something. He then said, and Naruto walked past Gizmo, and to his room. How the hell are you going to get these guys to talk, half of them aren't even afraid of Mammoth. Do you honestly think they're gonna be intimidated by you? The tiny terror then questioned and Naruto turned to him, and the former nin smirked. I'm a ninja remember, I have my ways. He said simply, before walking into his room, to get his chakra power deck suit, he was going to find Jinx, and he was going to beat the shit out of anyone who got in his way, cause no one fucked with his friends, as long as he had anything to say about it. Dump city, west side. Naruto landed on a building across from the one Jinx had been last. He dressed in his new suit, though the clouds covering the moon prevent him from being seen, according to Gizmo his suit looks somewhat like a cyborg ninja. The suit also had many new features added to it, but at the moment, Naruto was using his helmet's night vision mode and scope mode to allow him to watch the building. Watching Naruto narrowed his eyes, two men were on top of the building, walking around and holding simple handguns. Tilting his head downward the blonde looked to see another guard at the door, tilting to both sides, Naruto saw the only other guard was at the left side, leaving only the right free. Left has a fire escape, but the right is barren, foolish to leave a side unprotected. Even if it has no strategic value to you, someone else will find a use for it. Naruto thought to himself and reached over his right shoulder, touching the handle of his ninja too and smirking beneath his mask, a cyber ninja indeed. The blonde then deactivated his helmet's vision functions, and pressed a button on the buckle of his belt, reappearing on top of the building, his stealth camouflage online. Looking at the two guards Naruto rolled his eyes, before holding his palms towards them both, a brief flash of bright red light, was the only warning before static X came from his palms, and attached to the two men, knocking both unconscious. Naruto then flipped to the roof and walked over the two unconscious guards and to the door, slowly pulling it open as he then walked down into the building. Finding the client Gizmo had mentioned wouldn't be easy. Of course nothing he liked to do, was easy for most people, so why should this be any different? Walking down the numerous halls Naruto saw another guard, making him frown as he then silently stalked to the man, before grabbing him, and putting pressure around his neck to keep him silent. He then punched the man in the skull, laying him out like the others, as he then dragged the man down the hall and dumped him into a bathroom stall. 
Walking out Naruto looked to one of the doors and frowned seeing the number 512, meaning he was a good two floors above the guy he was supposed to be capturing. Growling in his throat Naruto stalked to the stairs only to halt seeing someone wearing a black ski mask with a J between the eyes walking up the stairs, before stopping to sneeze. Damn it, I caught a cold again. The man whined, and Naruto stepped aside allowing the man to walk past him, only for him to suddenly stop, uh oh, not again. The man said, before he stiffened then shifted and run down the hall towards the bathroom with his hands on his ass. Who the hell was he? Naruto wondered to himself then walked downstairs, shaking his head, after seeing the odd man. Soon coming down to the next floor Naruto leaned back into a wall and looked down the hall, to see no one around, the stairs to the next floor laying somewhere on this floor. Naruto silently walked down the hall, only to stop as a door opened, a man walking out and yawning slightly, Naruto rolled his eyes, and then lunged forward, quickly placing a static X onto the man to knock him out. Grabbing the man he then dragged him back to the room he had come from and closed the door. Walking back down the hall quietly Naruto came to a simple turn, but he leaned against the wall, and then tilted himself over to look in any case, only to grimace seeing five guards. Grumbling Naruto looked around, and then walked over to a door and opened it, walking out he headed to a window, and then opened it. Dumping out Naruto placed his hands and feet along the wall, and began wall crawling along it, and noted idly it was harder to focus chakra to single fingers than it was to his palm. Ignoring that thought he slowly crawled down the wall to the third floor, and looked for an open window, only to scowl seeing there was none. Crawling to one Naruto focused chakra to his fingers, and then cut through one, only to reach inside and open the window. Man, I really must have been going crazy to use the suit's functions over chakra and jutsu, though this stealth camo is fucking handy. Naruto thought remembering almost 200 times in the past he would have loved to vanish without a trace like he could now. Stopping these thoughts, Naruto silently walked out of the room, and checked the number. 320, 8 doors down. Naruto thought to himself and slowly crept down the hall, then saw a guard in front of the door he was heading towards. Narrowing his eyes Naruto watched the man, then looked down a second hall to his right, and cursed seeing another guard heading his way. Growling in his throat Naruto held a hand towards each of the men, and fired a static axe from each, the two weapons sailing through the air to hit both men, and knock them out like the ones before. Leaving these guys to lie out Naruto walked towards the door where the guy was supposed to be. However he raised a brow, there wasn't a door in fact the numbers seemed to skip 312. Narrowing his eyes Naruto then placed his ear onto the door, though his helmet covered his ears, it had very sensitive microphones in it. He heard someone walking around and thus stood up and deactivated his camo before reaching back and unsheathing his ninja too. The blonde haired thief then sliced into the wall and literally carved out a new door, causing the man beyond to look towards the door in shock and fear. Naruto then tossed an axe shuriken at the light of the room, turning it off, and activated his thermal vision, thus making the eyes of his helmet glow a fearsome red color. Naruto saw the man, and watched as he screamed and ran to an adjacent room, making the thief narrow his eyes and sheath his sword. Walking towards the room Naruto used his chakra to form numerous blades of wind around him, which began to spin rapidly. This was an advanced wind jutsu he made to replace his maku katen, though he had only finished it recently. It was basically hundreds of wind scythes spinning around his body and tearing anything that came towards him into pieces. And seeing the numerous bullets heading his way, he was glad he had. Hearing the click of an empty gun Naruto lunged forward, and lifted the man up by the throat, glaring at him with glowing red eyes. Where is my friend? Naruto demanded of the man angrily, his vocal synthesizer sounding different than his old deck suits, giving him a raspy metallic voice like Red had. The man in his hand just shouted, that he wouldn't get away with this, nor would he talk, and X grinned behind his mask, oh really now? He questioned darkly then walked over to a window, and kicked it out while his thermal vision deactivated to allow him to see normally. Let's see if we can't loosen up that tongue of yours. Naruto then declared as he jumped out of the building and teleported to a much taller building a short ways from the first building. What are you going to do? The man in his grasp, stuttered and Naruto walked over to the side of the building and looked down, the man seemed to go wide-eyed at this engulfed. Are you one of the Batman's students or something? He questioned and Naruto shook his head no, making the man sigh in relief, at least until Naruto held him out over the edge of the building, what the hell do you want? The man demanded, and Naruto narrowed his eyes behind his mask. My friend Jinx where is she? Naruto demanded and the man shook his head from side to side rapidly. I don't know. The man shouted, and Naruto let out a sigh. Too bad. He then stated and dropped the man down the building before then pressing his teleport button, to appear on the side of the building, and grabbed the man by his leg. Alright. A couple days ago that pink haired chick came by, but we didn't have, what we were supposed to give her. So we called a cop who owed us, and had him come and arrest her. The man admitted, and Naruto wanted to drop the guy for doing that to his friend, fortunately for the prick he wasn't a killer. You're so lucky I'm not an assassin. Naruto growled before then dodging his red, and yellow bird airing came at him from nowhere, and cut into the man's pants, before then holding them to the wall, great, the kids are here. 
Naruto mutters under his breath as he sees Robin on a nearby streetlight. The thief growls before then releasing the man in his grasp, and watched as Raven came out of the shadows to catch him. Naruto narrowed his eyes at this as then he heard a screech of tires, and turned to see the infamous T-car slide to a stop nearby, and Starfire flying down. How the hell do these kids always manage to get in the way? Flipping off the side off the building Naruto landed on the ground, and then turned to glare at Robin as he, and the other titans came together. I don't know who you think you are pal, but I don't like your style. Robin said angrily to the thief who simply looked at the titans with a frown. I don't rightly care kid, I've got more important matters, to attend to other, than being your babysitter for the night. Naruto sat and stood up to his full height only to unsheathe his sword. So stay out of my way, or else I'll have to beat you into the ground. Naruto growled as he finally stepped into the light to reveal himself, ironically getting a gasp from Starfire once more, and gaping jaws from the others. The figure standing before them was Red X, however, he had changed, his mask was different, the skull was still white with a red X over the right eye, but the two teeth on the outside looked like fangs, while the two inner ones were normal, and its eyes were dark grey, making the sockets look almost empty, while the rest of it was black with an almost metallic look to it. A pitch black, single-edged short sword rested in his right hand, the light from the T-car's lights glinting along its length. The suit he wore, was black as midnight, with a large jagged red axe over the chest, a ash grey belt cinched around his waist identical to his old one, save the circular buckle with the red axe on it, a kunai case was strapped to his right thigh, grey material forming the band around his leg. Grey gloves covered his hands, but had black fingers and a red axe on the palm, black fambuses covered his forearms and the backs of his hands, a red axe placed on the back of the fist. Over his feet were black boots, with thin grey soles and grey around the toes and heels, black greaves covering his shins, knees, and the tops of his feet. On his shoulder was a pair of black shoulder pads, with smaller pads coming down from them over his biceps, with several straps crossing over his back making an X, allowing the shoulder gear to hold on tightly, and also allowing him to cinch his sword sheath to his back. Looking at the shocked looks of the titans, Naruto grinned beneath his mask, only to frown when he remembered why he was even out. Swinging his sword he rested the blunt side of the blade against his shoulders, and clenched his left fist, small specks coming from the knuckles of his left vambris to spark with electricity, what's the matter kid? X question of Robin darkly then lowered his voice, making his synthesizer do the same, you look like you've just seen a ghost. Dump city police station. How many times are you gonna get brought here before you finally stop all the petty theft? A police officer grumbled towards Jinx while handing her an apple. Same time you stop playing around with these idiotic JPD cops, you're a better cop than half these guys. She countered and the man grumbled under his breath angrily. Unlike the other police officers, this man didn't wear a helmet, instead he had on a pair of sunglasses with his short brown hair, and a slight bit of unshaven whiskers on his face, making him look scruffy. Bah, what's a kid like you know about being a police officer? The man countered, and Jinx gave a shrug, she couldn't technically argue with that point. Sitting back in the seat of the interrogation room, Jinx wondered why Officer Connors, the man sitting in front of her, and an old friend, had gotten a transfer to Jump City. Sure he had been stationed in Detroit, a town most heroes steered clear of, because of all the crime there, but the old guy had always kept up the good fight. So would you transfer, I doubt anyone in town wanted that. Jinx said, and the old guy grunted under his breath, then pulled out a cigarette and lit it. I thought the cops here didn't allow you to smoke. She said with a smirk and the man looked at her with a frown, before lifting one hand, and flipping her off. Oh yeah, won't those also kill you from lung cancer or something? The girl then asked with another grin as Connor's eyes turned to her, then placed his cigarette fully in his mouth, before lifting his other hand to give her her two birds. Same old officer Connors. The girl said with a grin, and a mock salute to the man who grunted, and then took a long drag from his sig before then leaning back in his own seat, and resting his boots onto the table before them. I decided I needed a change of scenery, that's why I left. The brown-haired man told the girl simply while looking to the ceiling, and she gave him a look, before shrugging and biting into the apple. You remembered I like the sour ones? She asked with a raised brow making the older man grunt. You don't practically raise a crazy psycho chick with control over bad luck without remembering a couple things. He grunted making Jinx snicker into her hands as he took another drag on his cigarette. You never changed you old guy. And unless I'm mistaken Officer Connors, you didn't raise me. I was an orphan, who didn't like the orphanage, you just happened to keep trying to take me back, and keep me from blowing things up. The girl sat with a grin, and Connors grunted once more before giving her an annoyed look. I might as well have raised you, I was probably the only adult you even partly respected. Connors stated and Jinx grinned at him. True. She said happily making Connors groan then looked at her again. Now I hear you're having some kind of a feud with those titan kids, what's that all about? Connors asked and Jinx coughed, crossing her arms as she took a quick bite of her apple and swallowed. It was our first job as graduates for this slave guy. She started to explain, while Officer Connors just sat back, and nodded his head to the girl, while listening and smoking his cigarette. 
Meanwhile outside, a familiar dark-haired young man walked towards the building, a sword sheathed at his lower back, and face formed into a scowl. He wore a black sleeveless kimono top, bandages wrapped around his waist, with a Kanoha hit I-8 secured around his forehead, a pair of loose black pants, with a dark blue cloth wrapped around his waist, a purple rope tied to his waist to hold it, and his sword sheath on. Over his forearms is a pair of black gloves, which leave his fingers and palms bare, a pair of sandals cover his feet with black leg warmers over his shins and calves. Walking past some policemen he went inside the man giving him odd looks as they walked past him, though he didn't see it when they did. The boy walked into the police station brushing past many of the men who grumbled about stupid brats. Sasuke walked to the desk of this place, and stared at the man behind it, seeming to be doing paperwork before then looking at him, and raising a brow. What the hell are you supposed to be kid? He questioned and Sasuke twitched angrily, didn't this fucking moron know who he was? I need the records of incoming individuals for the past year. Sasuke said simply and the man behind the desk raised a brow. We don't have no records of incoming people kid, there's too fucking many for that kind of shit. The man said rudely and Sasuke twitched, were these people fucking with him? What kind of fool doesn't make sure that their enemies aren't trying to enter into their city? Glaring at the man he narrowed his eyes, perhaps he was lying, perhaps he was trying to keep him from what he wanted. Narrowing his eyes Sasuke decided he didn't like that idea, and slowly reached for his sheath Chikado. Elsewhere. Dude, Red X got an upgrade, he looks like something out of Cyborg Shinobi Chronicles. Beast Boy exclaimed then grinned, while everyone else gawked at the new Red X form. Awesome. BB then exclaimed, only to get glares from his friends, making the green teen feel like an idiot yet again. However Naruto wasn't so amused, seeing as he was kind of busy at the moment, normally he wouldn't mind playing around with the kids some, but right now Jinx needed him. Sorry kids, but I can't hang out with you all night, I've got more important matters to attend. X said darkly as he flipped his ninja too, now holding it backhanded he lunged at the titans, before they even knew he had moved. He immediately slammed the pommel of his sword into Robin's gut, knocking the wind from him, as the thief then used a roundhouse kick to send the younger teen flying away. Naruto then flipped out of the way as a sonic beam headed straight for him and sheathed his ninja too. The teen then held out his right hand and disappeared, only to then reappear in front of Cyborg a swirling sphere of chakra in his right hand. Basengan. He exclaimed slamming his attack into Cyborg's gut, sending the titanium teen flying back and through a building. At that moment Raven lifted a pair of cards and tossed them at the thief, only for him to wink out of existence and reappear in the air spinning. The thief threw an axe at the girl, which quickly wrapped around her face, covering her mouth and making the girl's eye twitch, as she then tried to rip it off. At that moment BB lunged at Naruto as a large gorilla, swinging his arms down to slam into the thief, however this was thwarted, when the thief vanished from his sights. The masked thief then appeared behind Beast Boy, the green ape turned only for Naruto, to lash out with an electrically enhanced punch to the ribcage. BB's first stood on end from the quick shock only for Naruto to then appear in front of him and punch him straight in the gut, knocking the wind from him, then lift both fists into an uppercut that sent the large ape falling back. Naruto then had to flip backwards as Starfire came flying forward, flinging her star bolts towards the masked thief. Naruto soon came to a wall and placed both feet onto it, and leapt straight towards Starfire who used her eye beams, only for the thief to vanish, then appear behind her. The girl turned her head, to look at the thief wide-eyed as he then kicked out at Starfire, his kicks enhanced with electricity like his fists. The girl was quickly assaulted by numerous kicks from Naruto, before the thief then used an axe kick on her back, and sent her sailing into the ground as he then rolled into a spin, before hitting the ground, leaving only a surprised raven coherent enough to watch him. I thought already told you I don't have time to play with you kids today. Naruto said darkly as Robin struggled to get to his feet, the thief then stopped as he heard the static of his police scanner placed a hand to his right ear. Somebody. This is the JCPD we need help down here, there's, some, some guy down here with a sword tearing up the station. If anyone can hear this please he, ah. The message came to a halt with that scream, and static making Naruto's eyes whiting, jinx. He thought then crouched and jumped up, teleporting as he did so and flying off away from the titans, as they all tried to get up. Dude, is it just me, or did we just get our butts kicked? BB questioned as he got up, and rubbed his head, Robin gritting his teeth at the younger boy's words. The only one who didn't disagree was Raven, and the girl was still trying to get the damn X off of her mouth, so she could use her powers. Them city police department. Shit. Officer Connors said his sunglasses now gone, as he and Jinx both sit crouched behind an overturned table, the older man holding a modified M1911A1 in one hand, and a combat knife in the other. Does this guy happen to be a friend of yours? He then questioned of Jinx, and the pink-haired girl shook her head rapidly, as another body was tossed their way, slamming into the table they had taken refuge against. Great, that's even worse. He grunted out and took a quick peek out from behind the table towards the intruder. 
The teen had spiky black hair reminiscent of Robin's, loose-fitting almost Japanese-looking clothes, and a long straight single-edged sword. Hmm, a Chikado not really a good sword, takes too long to draw from the sheath. Officer Connors thought to himself and looked to Jinx. I want you to get out of here, I'll distract Spiky over there. He ordered and Jinx gaped at him. Are you fucking crazy old timer? She questioned with a hushed tone. That maniac over there will tear you to shreds. She said with a worried look and Officer Connors merely grunted then looked back over the table as Sasuke walked into a hull. Perfect, that hull should be too narrow for him to use his sword. If I can get him up close I won't have to worry about that blade. But I still don't know what else he can do. The man thought to himself, blue eyes narrowing as he then looked at Jinx. 1. My name isn't old guy, old timer, old man, or anything with old in it. It's Jack. 2. Get the fuck out of here before I knock you out and carry your ass out of here. Jack growled at the girl, and Jinx glared at him, half then let out her breath and crossed her arms. Just don't get killed. She said before then rushing off in the other direction as Jack frowned and looked back to the hallway, I'll try my best kid, I'll try my best. He thought then took hold of his gun and knife at the same time, and rushed past his downed comrades in a crouch, holding the two weapons in front of him. Looking down the hall Sasuke had gone down, Jack grimaced, blood and bodies lay to either side, and looking down, Jack cursed lightly and placed his back against the side of the door, seeing Sasuke already at the other end of the hall, holding one of the other officers up with his sword. The black-haired teen then tossed the officer off his blade, making him hit the side of the hall, leaving a dent behind as Sasuke quickly turned, and sliced the mechanism holding the door shut, before walking in at a sedate pace. Man, this kid really needs, to learn the concept of stealth. Jack said to himself, before rushing down the hall past his fellow officers and towards Sasuke. Meanwhile with Jinx, the pink-haired girl ran out of the building, grimacing whenever she saw an especially gruesome corpse. As she ran she soon saw the exit, and let out a sigh of relief, quickly running to it, only to collide with someone. Kami. Came a synthesized voice and Jinx looked down to see Red Axe, whom Gizmo said was actually Tempest, and with Tempest's sword on his back that made sense. Tempest. Jinx said happily hugging a surprised thief, and then grabbed him by the shoulders. We have to go back inside. Officer Connors is in trouble. She said quickly, confusing the blonde who then let out a sigh before placing his hand on her mouth. Alright, I'll pull my hand off as soon as you calm the fuck down Jinx. He said and Jinx started to breath much more slowly, and X removed his hand from her face. Alright, now tell me what the hell has got you so worked up. Naruto questioned the girl who then nodded her head to the older teen. You see I was an orphan, but I kept running away when I was younger, and there was always this cop back home who would keep trying to take me back to the orphanage. He was probably the only good influence I had, and even then he's not quite the best of the best, he's just always looked out for me. Jinx said and Naruto had a brief vision of Aruka in his head seeing as that sounded like this Officer Connors was Jinx's Aruka, and now this psycho with spiky black hair is tearing the police station apart, and Officer Connors is trying to stall him, so I can get away. The girl said quickly, and Naruto narrowed his eyes on the building, and then turned his head, to look at the pink haired girl. Don't worry, I'll go save him you head on back to yours and Mammoth and Gizmo's place. Naruto said then gently pushed Jinx off of himself and ran into the building, and narrowed his eyes seeing all the bodies around the place. Whoever this psycho is, he's really got to practice on his stealth, the fucking idiot will have everyone in the damn country after him for this. Naruto thought to himself as he passed the numerous guards, and ran in the direction of the carnage. Back with Jack, the man was not having a good time, he and the black haired kid were in the file room, many of the file cabinets having been sliced into pieces by an irate teen that couldn't seem to read any of them. This had led to him attacking anything that moved, which unfortunately included Jack himself. Damn it. He exclaimed rolling out of the way of the dark-haired teen's Chicago, and firing his gun at the boy who used his sword to deflect the bullets. The older man growled and rolled to the side as the dark-haired teen lunged at him once more, swinging his Chicago towards the man only to miss. You're better than the rest of these losers I'll give you that much, but you still don't stand a chance against an elite Ichiha. Sasuke said smugly, making Jack groan to himself wondering what kind of place the Siga maniac lived in. Sasuke then lunged at Jack, who calmed his breathing and used his knife to connect with the Chikado at its hilt, then slammed his fist into Sasuke's face, before then punching him with the other arm. Grabbing him by the hair he then slammed the punk's face into one of the only standing file cabinets. Don't get too cocky, the moment you underestimate an opponent is the moment you lose. Jack said to Sasuke, aiming his gun towards the Ichiha's head only for him to then spin his legs, to kick the gun out of his hands and take a swing at Jack. The man cursed and flipped backwards, blood pouring from his forehead from light cut. Quickly wiping the blood away Jack cursed and ducked to the side as Sasuke swung his sword at him once more, blood quickly poured down from the wound on Jack's head however, and the man quickly rolled to a sheet and ripped a long strip from the grey cloth. He then began wrapping it over his head, before tying it in the back of his head, and wiping the blood from his eyes once more, the ends of the cloth hanging down to his shoulder blades. Dodging Sasuke's shikado once more, Jack noticed the teen seemed more annoyed he was dodging than anything. 
Something tells me this kid hasn't lost enough fights to know the meaning of humility. Jack thought to himself then rolled along the floor and grabbed his gun, aiming it at the Chiha once more, the boy glaring at him with a snarl on his lips. Inu, Akuma, Yusagi, Hibi, Mikami, Tori, Tanuki, Haku, Taka, Itachi, Mengusu, Kitsun, Yama, Tori, Inu, Taka, Neko, Karasu, Hashi, Haij, Kuma, Seru, Mizumi. A robotic voice chanted as a shimmer of some kind, came from nowhere, and blocked the spiky-haired boy's shikado with a sword of its own. What the hell? Jack questioned as the shimmer then took shape of some kind of cyber ninja. The man then watched as the ninja swung its own sword, knocking the samurai one of off balance before then kicking him in the chest, and sending him flying back into a wall. Quickly regaining his senses the man aimed his gun towards the ninja, which turned its head, to reveal a white skull with a red axe curving down one eye. Who the hell are you? He demanded and received silence. Answer me. He demanded once more while pointing the gun towards the sword-wielding ninja. Neither enemy nor friend. The ninja finally sat and looked towards Sasuke, the boy getting back to his feet and glaring at the black-clad warrior. Is this some kind of Anbu? Humph, if it is you'll know what I want. Sasuke thought to himself then pointed his sword towards the skull mask thief. Are you an Anbu? He questioned, yet received silence as his answer, making him grit his teeth in anger. I asked you a question you low-level scum. Are you an Anbu for this city or not? Sasuke demanded and the thief let out a low chuckle. No, I am a ghost from another world. With that Naruto, flipped his ninja tooth to be held backhanded, and crouched down into his stance. Sasuke raised a brow at this then activated his Sharingan, smirking as he watched the strange Anbu. Fine then, Takuro, let's see what the Anbu of this strange world can do. With that the spiky haired boy lunged at Naruto, swinging his Shikado only for him to vanish in a shimmer of light. What the? Sasuke questioned only to be kicked from behind and sent sprawling forward. It seems like I'm going to have to take you down a few pegs. Naruto said darkly while Jack just watched the two with growing confusion, then ducked behind something so he could watch, but wouldn't get between them. Sasuke then got back to his feet and glared at the Anbu before him with anger before lunging at him with a roar. Only for him to vanish once more and then appear above him and use a drop kick. Sasuke punched the ground, then flipped back to his feet once more, and lunged at the masked thief, swinging his Chikado at him wildly. Naruto blocked each strike easily, smirking, as the Sharingan wasn't working, thanks to the blonde's mask keeping him from using any illusions. Naruto then ducked quickly to the side while sticking a foot out, tripping Sasuke and sending him tumbling forward into a wall with a grunt. Catch me if you can. Naruto then exclaimed in his synthesized voice, jumping up to then activate his 1000 blades jutsu. The thousands of wind-like blades cut open the roof without him having to move his own sword even once. Sasuke gritted his teeth at this, and lunged up after the thief, finding himself in the computer section of the station. Come out you coward, and face me like a man. Sasuke suddenly exclaimed only for the thief to appear before him, and slam his hand into his face, sending him reeling back into the hole, and to the ground below with an audible groan. Naruto chuckled at this, and watched as Sasuke got up, holding his back and grimacing in pain the whole time. Come on kid X marks the spot. Naruto mocked while pointing to the X on his chest, and Sasuke snarled before then crouching down and lunging at the thief who then used his ninja tooth to block Sasuke's shikado. You've really got to lighten up chuckles. Naruto said humorously to Sasuke who roared, swinging shikado wildly, while Naruto dodged it with ease, smirking at the dark hard boy's temper problems. Hulse still damn you. Sasuke roared at the thief who then grabbed Sasuke's right arm, swung his right leg to knock Sasuke off his feet, then turned to judo toss Sasuke into a table with a computer on it, sending sparks flying everywhere. Sasuke then stood up painting and looking to his sword, then sheathed the blade, Naruto grinned, chuckling as he then moved his arm, and sheathed his own blade. Good, now we can fight as warriors. Naruto said while taking a stance, remembering the words of Red. Hand to hand, is the basis of all combat, only a fool would trust his life to a weapon. With that Naruto and Sasuke lunged forward, and each threw a punch at the other, both connecting and sending them flying back. Naruto flipped to land on his hands and feet, while Sasuke landed in a crouch, the two stared one another down before then lunging at one another once more. Naruto ducked under the punch from Sasuke, and swung his leg into a kick, this was blocked by the dark-haired Ichiha who then pushed the leg to the side, making Naruto spin his body into a flip, in order to stay on balance. The two slowly got back to their feet after this, and Sasuke narrowed his eyes. Somehow this seems familiar like I recognize that punch. Sasuke thought to himself then watched as the thief then flipped backwards, before then lunging out of a window. The dark-haired Ichiha mumbled a curse, before following after the thief, lunging out of the window, and after the black clad boar. He saw him on a roof, and quickly ran up the side of the building, and onto the roof, glaring towards him angrily. Sasuke then watched as the thief made a come on motion with one hand, and gritted his teeth. I'll do better than that. Sasuke snarled in his mind, and made several hand seals, before forming the tiger seal, and in taking a deep breath. Kaden, Hasenka no Jutsu. 
He exclaimed as numerous fireballs flew from his mouth and towards the thief who inwardly cursed. Shit, Sasuke team this is a highly populated area, what the hell are you thinking? The masked blonde wondered then flipped around the small fireballs, before then vanishing and appearing beside of Sasuke, plunging his fist into the other boy's face, and sending him flying off to the side. I have to get the team out of here, away from any innocents. Naruto then thought and looked towards the bay, nodding to himself he headed in that direction, and heard Sasuke roar as he followed after the blonde. Come on team, that's a follow me Ubaka. I'll really cut loose when we get away from people. The blonde haired thief thought to himself with a smirk as he evaded a couple kunai and shuriken thrown by the Ichiha brat. Elsewhere. The titans walked into the JCPD building with pure horror written on their faces. Who the hell did this? X. Cyber gasped as a man walked from one room, shaking his head slightly, then looked at the titans and blinked. What took you so long? He asked and BB snickered making the rest of the team glare at him once more to shut him up. Sir, who did this? Robin questioned while motioning to the carnage of bodies strewn throughout the building. Some fucking black haired kid in robes with a Chicago handy, that's who. The brown haired man grunted then sat down, and pulled a cigarette from one of his pockets then grabbed a lighter, and lit it in his mouth. He anyone you know? Jack then questioned and Robin frowned, before shaking his head no. Dude, so X didn't do any of this. BB questioned and Jack frowned. You mean that ninja freak with the skull mask? He asked and Robin immediately nodded his head. He was the one who got the sword guy to leave. Jack said and Robin frowned to himself, then took a thoughtful expression. They were working together. He asked and Jack scoffed. No they were fighting dipshit they really didn't seem to like each other. Jack said then mumbled while taking a long drag from his cigarette, and Robin took a thoughtful expression. Alright, we're going to split up, Beast Boy, Cyborg, Starfire, you stay here and help. Looking to Jack for a name the man rolled his eyes. Officer Jack Connors. He said simply, and Robin nodded his head. Help Officer Connors here, and see if anyone else around here survived. Raven, you going to go looking for X, while I go looking for this sword-wielding maniac. Robin ordered and Raven grimaced before then vanishing into the shadows. Robin then raced out of the building and onto his R-cycle, while Connors grumbled under his breath. With Raven. Raven appeared in the skies over Jump City, looking around for the wandering thief known as Red X when she spotted fire, and flew towards it. She then saw X and their mystery sword-wielding maniac. The two were in pitch combat, and the girl could see why Officer Connors said they didn't seem to like one another. The one with the robes was breathing fire however, and Raven was fairly certain that wasn't a metahuman power, especially considering she could sense it. So moving in closer Raven decided to watch the two and try to figure out how they were controlling the elements themselves. Naruto blocked right hook from Sasuke, the boy was beginning to be annoying, it was obvious to the blonde that while he might have gotten a little rusty, Sasuke's skills had stagnated without a challenge. So the blonde was more than his equal at this point, and thus was easily avoiding the attacks. Don't get cocky Naruto, remember the Sasuke team still has that damn cursed seal of his. Naruto thought to himself then flipped backwards as Sasuke punched towards him, hitting the ground instead as the black clad thief flipped back, off of the building they were on and to the docks below. Sasuke followed the thief, and threw numerous punches and kicks at him, and the skull mask warrior was blocking all of them easily, raising Sasuke's ire. The dark haired youth could swear he had seen this style before however, like he knew the person behind that mask, but Sasuke didn't pay any attention to that, instead he lunged at the skull masked warrior, throwing another punch only for his arm to be grabbed, and his body flipped backwards into the bay. Naruto then followed after Sasuke, the masked thief smirking to himself as he then lunged forward, plowing his fist into Sasuke's face once more, and sending him flying back. The thief then crouched down as Sasuke flipped up, and formed a few more familiar hand seals. Kaden. Takakyu no Jutsu. The Chiha brat called, launching a massive ball of flames towards the black clad thief. However, Naruto quickly jumped into the air and used his chakra to manipulate wind once more, creating a vacuum to stop the flames and put them out. Landing to see a gaping Sasuke, Naruto then lunged forward, and ducked down before kicking the Chiha brat into the air. Flipping to his feet quickly Naruto then launched himself into the air and delivered a dropkick to the Chiha's back, sending him flying back down into the water, making a massive splash. Naruto then landed, with a slight panting breath he looked to the water as Sasuke pulled himself back up, Raven watching nearby with white eyes at the abilities of the two warriors. Yes I remember I remember that. Sasuke then exclaimed before laughing loudly. I remember this feeling. This tension. He then sat and quickly formed several hand seals. Naruto. He exclaimed angrily as a familiar ball of lightning formed in his left hand. Naruto was about to prepare to dodge the attack, when he noticed a presence behind him, and saw Raven a distance away. Cursing lightly, Naruto knew he couldn't move there was too great a possibility, that if he were to dodge Sasuke would hit her instead. Gritting his teeth Naruto held his hand out to the side, and narrowed his eyes on Sasuke. Quickly forming a Kage bunch Naruto held his right hand to the side, and let it form a swirling sphere of energy into his hand. 
If I can't win this without someone dying, then I guess we'll both just have to settle for a draw this time Sasuke. Naruto thought to himself as the clone then dispelled itself. Sasuke then lunged forward with an almost psychotic look to his eyes, and Naruto lunged forward also. Jidori. Adamura Sengen. The two exclaimed at the same time as their most powerful attacks hit one another, and Raven had to shield herself as a burst of power expanded from the two combatants. She was still able to see beyond her shield, but what she saw was beyond any power she had ever seen two mere humans use before. Black as midnight a sphere, a shell of power was rapidly expanding itself, white glowing lines slowly covering the sphere as it grew until, it exploded, and Raven was sent flying back in her shield. Raven soon found the sphere of power had dissipated, and looked around, only to feel her eyes whiten, seeing as the water in the bay had been moved to form a sphere in the ground, only it was now filling back up. Looking around Raven saw something floating in the water, and flew down towards it, reaching a hand down she pulled Red Axe out of the water, and onto a black platform made from her own energy. Looking down on him she noticed a crack in his helmet, only for her eyes to whiten as red energy suddenly leaked into the crack, and it slowly sealed shut. Was, was that a demonic ore? The girl wondered to herself, only to shake the thought off, and then looked towards the tower then back down at X. If anything we need to know about that sword wielding maniac, if and when he comes back. The girl reasoned then flew towards the tower with Red X as her passenger prisoner. Meanwhile Sasuke was laying face first on the ground, hidden near a warehouse and unable to move. So you found him. Came the voice of Neji as the Hyuga walked towards Sasuke he gave a weak smirk towards him. Neji looked at the Chiha and frowned at him. Then you've alerted our presence to the authorities and protectors of this city. Neji sat and Sasuke glared at the Hyuga, wasn't it enough that he'd found Naruto, what did it matter if a few weaklings knew they were around? And no doubt now they're going to be hunting you down for murdering their comrades foolish. Neji sat and Sasuke once more gritted his teeth and glared at the Hyuga. Neji then moved quickly, grabbed Sasuke and slammed him up against the wall forcefully. Narrowing his eyes on the Chiha, he then kneed him in the stomach and let him drop back to the ground holding his midsection. Our orders are to bring back Naruto, alive and unharmed Chiha. Neji then said, before kicking Sasuke in the side and into a wall, making the brat grunt in pain as Neji then shook his head. And should you, or anyone else in this team attempt to kill Naruto, I am to eliminate you with extreme prejudice. Neji said darkly making Sasuke glare at him. And if you think being the last of Ichiha will get you off this time Sasuke, you're dead wrong, these orders come from the Hokage herself. And though the council thinks otherwise, the Hokage's word is law in the village. Not theirs. Neji said darkly before grabbing Sasuke by the hair and lifting him up. So stay in line, or I'll put you in your place permanently. Neji said darkly before slamming Sasuke's head into a wall, knocking the Ichiha out cold, as he then took hold of his leg and dragged him off, back towards home. In a dark room in an unknown place, a single slate gray eye opens to look at a screen showing Naruto fighting the titans in his ex-suit, the fight between Naruto and Sasuke, Sasuke being carried off by Neji, and Naruto to Titan's tower. Truly amazing power. The voice is feminine, yet cold and calculating, the eye is trained into a deadly glare onto the screen before her, her form shadowed in darkness. One with godlike power over the wind, the other holds power over fire and lightning at a lesser scale, truly amazing. The girl sat darkly, while looking at a freeze frame of the two warriors side by side. The dark haired one is physically powerful however he seems a tad too arrogant, also he is rash and obviously doesn't think past a few brief moments. The other however has shown himself to be highly intellectual, thinking things through until the end. Like the first one this red axe is physically capable of assisting me however, he also seems to have a tad too many morals. The girl deduced then laced her fingers before herself and arrowed her eye. What would father do? She questioned of no one, clockwork gears churning in the background till her eye closed, and a light chuckle escaped her throat. Of course the rash one wouldn't make a good heir for father, but this red axe would, but the rash one would make for an interesting pawn. The girl said to herself then the screen shut off, blanketing the room in shadows and hiding the girl from view. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.